Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Sports View. I'm Ron Cameron. Bob Pages, who knows what he's doing, probably saucing it up in New York, having a few drinks, trying to learn what's going on there. Yes, he's, he's, he's made it beyond, let's see now, this is a couple weeks in New York. You know, he spit out Bill Bonds and Eli Zarrett. Bob Page, they're, they're taking a little time to here. Maybe they like him. Who knows? No co-host today. Uh, we're going to talk Lions football, the whole program. Very exciting subject these days with the two beat writers, Mike O'Hara of the Detroit News and Kurt Sylvester of the Detroit Free Press. And uh, they've had quite a thrill covering the Lions for many, many years. And we'll talk with them in just a moment here after we tell you about the advertisers. And here are the beauties. Al Dietrich Oldsmobile, M59 in Waterford. You can get a great deal on a new car or truck from Al Dietrich Olds. Sports Fans Journal, I don't want to stutter on that one. Here it is. Issue number, what do we got now? Issue number uh, 27. <laughs> no, no, 26. I'm losing count. 26 months I've done this. Four Color Magazine, the hottest magazine going in sports. Dial this number 24 hours a day for subscription information. 751-1818. Hope to have you as a subscriber. The hottest magazine going. What else we got? Dugan's Irish Pub on Woodward, north of 13 Mile. Cattleman's Meat Center with David Lee Roth, or David Roth, we'll say, and the Eastern Market and Hamtramck Sports Medicine Center with the old U of D trainer, Jack Morris, because he's still alive doing these with three locations. Maxie's Main Street in the heart of downtown Royal Oak. Binary Computers on Woodward at 12 Mile for all your computer needs. And we have Top Hat, where you won't find Bob Page eating those little burgers there because well, Bob Page is making big money. He's in New York now. Pro-Am Sports Systems, if you want to see this show that these two gentlemen do here. We'll talk about that in a little bit, as well as Red Wings and Pistons. Call them in Ann Arbor. The Sting, the hot new nightclub on James Cousins at the Lodge Freeway. Thermal window if you're trying to replace your windows. And Town Center Heating and Cooling. As I mentioned, Mike O'Hara and Kurt Sylvester are here. The Lions, a five-game losing streak. Uh, what are we going to start here by talking about? <laughs> All right, is it time for a change? Wait a minute, start with one more commercial. We're into the close already. <laughs> <laughs> this is what you call some success nice in the advertising today. field. Yes. Is it time for a change right now? I don't think in midseason. I don't think it would do any good. Um, and uh, poor Daryl is, is beleaguered, obviously. He's, you judge a guy in the NFL on his one and loss record. He's not winning. Uh, and now uh, with, with their two best quarterbacks hurt, they're really in a bad way. Yeah, I, I don't think they'll change in midseason. I hate to agree with Kurt, but I do. You can't change quarterbacks in the <laughs> middle right. of the season. Or, uh, uh, quarter coach, coach, coach. Quarterback, you got changes. <laughs> well, you know, tries, but uh, but uh, no, it just doesn't. It doesn't do any good usually. I mean, I, the history has shown that. And uh, if you're forward to make a change now, what good is it going to do? The season's gone anyway. He's history at the end of the season, though, isn't he, Daryl Rogers? Well, the way it's going, yeah, I would I would say uh, that there's going to be a change. You can't go on. Uh, forever winning three and four and five games in a season and, and keep your job. And yeah, he knows that. He's aware of it. And um, I, I think he's upgraded the team to a certain extent, but they're still not winning. Yeah. Mike, anything to add to that? Well, you know, yeah, I, I, my sentiments are in, are in Kurt's <laughs> <laughs> You guys are agreeing quite well today now. <laughs> but, you know, yeah, Daryl's not, uh, he's not, he knows what's going on. And uh, it is a better football team. It really is. I, you know, the next coach is going to come in and look like a genius. Well, that, now that brings it to the next point. Uh, how many people turned this job down uh, when Daryl Rogers came? A lot of people turned it down. You're saying it's a, well, it's okay. Uh, not, and nobody really turned down the, the offer. I mean, there, there were some inquiries. They talked to uh, Bob James out in Washington. It would be crazy to leave Washington, but uh, you know. What was the, the coach at Brigham Young? Uh, Lavelle Edwards. Oh, Lavelle Edwards. Edwards yeah. He guys, turned him down, though, didn't he? Yeah. he didn't Somewhat. Move, you know, yeah. The guys yeah. don't turn down you know, NFL yeah. jobs because the money's so good, and it's one of 28 jobs. And, you know, All right. you, well, and I think it's more than one of 28 because I think the Lions and Bill Ford take really good care of their coaches. Right, anybody exactly. that's ever been here as an assistant or knows anybody that was ever here likes to coach for the Detroit yeah, Lions. They good take job. good care of them. Bill, uh, Bill Ford has paid off a lot of coaches. Put them on scholarship for two or three years if they're <laughs> there not you go, doing well. My life. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, like uh, good old uh, our buddy Monty Clark. Monty Clark. He spent uh, what was it the last last two or three, three years, years of two hundred and fifty big ones a year. Yeah, you know, just for staying home and uh, not the grass. Yeah, not for, for staying home and not knocking the lions in print or on the radio. And that's, All right, you're Bill Ford. Who do you pick as the next Lions coach? I like Dick Vermeil. Well, it's funny because we were talking about that through the haze last night. Really, this morning. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Um, I, I think Dick Vermeil is a, would be a good candidate. He's a guy. I think Bill Ford's got to have somebody that has proven they can win. I don't think he can take a college guy, except maybe one or two guys. Jimmy Johnson, of Miami. Jimmy Johnson, maybe Terry Donahue. I think those are about the only two guys. 
he could take a chance on without just getting, you know, torn to pieces. I think he's got to have somebody that has uh, shown that they can win in the NFL or has a, just a great track record as an assistant. Well, you know, what, what about a guy, though, like, uh, like a Floyd Peters? Or how about Dan Henning? You know, who, well, I don't think he was a bad coach in Atlanta, but he got involved in a bad situation. Bad situation. You know, with the owners down there, the, the Rankin Smith, they call him the Clampets. <laughs> yeah, he's a beaut, too. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, he was just in a situation where he really had no help from the front office. I think the Lions, one thing they've done is they've beefed up the front office, and I think at least the next coach who comes in, he's really going to have a good shot there. Uh, yeah. Oh, I think so too. Yeah, I, th I think they've uh, the Lions have sort of caught up with the rest of the NFL. I think they've been outdistanced uh, by the league and the, the the better organizations. But I think they've made some moves now to to uh, give some more people some responsibility. So yeah, I think they're coming up. And I tell you, there's another guy that I keep thinking about coming. He keeps coming to mind for the coaching job, and that's uh, Jerry Glanville down at Houston. Uh, He's, uh, he's doing a pretty Mike good shaking. job. Pretty good job. Mike's shaking there. his head over there. You don't like Jerry, Jerry Glanville? Well, I've got a headache, but. <laughs> <laughs> but the th Jerry would love, he would love to coach in Detroit. He, I know the Houston writers, and he is forever talking about Detroit and how wonderful it is in Detroit. He's got a contract at Houston, and I'm not sure Bill Ford would even be interested uh, in a guy uh, with this Johnny Cash image who's leaving <laughs> tickets for the, the Phantom of the Opera and stuff like that. But. I'd, he'd be a, he, he be liked an it for Elvis Presley, yeah. Elvis, tickets for Elvis. Uh, James Dean, uh, <laughs> Phantom of the Opera. The only, no, That'd be a story if they showed up. <laughs> it would be. Bud Adams might leave two tickets for Jerry Glanville at Will Call one of these days. <laughs> so it's a situation that he's got to get somebody, and somebody with a proven record, Vermeil, just really comes to mind with me. I just like, I just like Vermeil. Yeah, but you know, I think when, when Dick Vermeil was burned out as the coach at Philadelphia, I think that said a lot about uh, about him and about the coaching profession too. You know, you don't want to get into all of that, but look, he left Philadelphia on a downer. What what's to recommend him seven years later here in Detroit? Of course, weren't there some? Wasn't that right during that 1982 strike when everything was? Uh, uh, there was a lot of stress involved, and with the kind of guy he was, I can see how that would make for an. There's unusual always situation. stress involved. Oh what? well, sure, but I mean that was unusual. Uh, and he, did, you know, he didn't like it. And, well, who uh, would make the decision on uh, on coaching here? Does Vinici have the power to bring in his own man? No, it's not his own man. It's Ford, Bill Ford, makes all of the major decisions. All right now, if a coach comes in and demands full control, will Vinici, uh, you know, will, what would happen there? I don't think they'll ever do that again. You know, when Monty, Monty, Clark, Monty Clark came in, he was a supreme Allied commander of uh, football forces at the Detroit uh, Lions, <laughs> and, and I don't think they'll ever do that again because I don't think it worked. Well, Monty Clark said nobody could win with this team. Well. That's as long as it's with Russ Thomas and Bill Ford running this operation. Well, that's I, easy well, I, I think yeah. I think if you're if you're going to give a coach that much power, you know, to run the entire show, I think it's got to be something that he earns. I don't think you give it to him just right off the bat. Come in, give Good him all him. the responsibility right. and all the power. I think he's got to be around. He's got to show that he knows personnel well enough to get things together. Yeah. I think the Lions put Daryl Rogers in a in a bad position by giving him full responsibility for everything when he came in. He came right out of college football. I don't think he knew. Uh, NFL personnel well enough to do it, and I think if they give that responsibility to anybody, it's got to be a guy like Chuck Knox, Don Shula. I mean, you know, somebody of that stature. I'm not talking about those guys coming to the Lions, but it's got to be somebody that's been around, somebody knows the NFL well enough. Yeah, I agree with that exactly. You know, I think in your paper was it either Sunday or Monday you raised the point about the Lions might be in the team to hire the first black coach in yeah. the National Football League. Uh, I mean, there'll be a that's lot of pressure on him in that regard too. And, uh, you know, without making a judgment one way or the other, there are a lot of factors that enter it. Mm -hmm. it really is there is. anybody out there qualified to run this team that's black? Oh, sure, of course. They're good. Absolutely. I mean, I don't, you know, I've been... Well, this team, I'm saying. But to predict success, I mean, you know, I don't think anybody has the right to come in and pick up the, the 1966 Green Bay Packers and, you know, and, 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 or whatever, you know. But, sure, there are black coaches out there. I think Tony Dungy is a very qualified sure. coach. I'm not sure about uh, Dennis Screen. He, he coached at Northwestern. Didn't really have an outstanding record. He, you know, he uh, been successful as an assistant here, though. In yeah, the NFL. yeah, in assistant. the NFL, right? But I think Tony J Dungy is probably the most qualified of the black coaches. Just looking at their records, but sure. you can't predict what they're going. Anybody's no, going to do. No, it's hard to predict. Okay, we're going to come back and talk more with the two beat writers of the Detroit News, Mike O'Hara and Kurt Sylvester, the Free Press of the Lions. After this timeout. What's the problem, lady? Where's your husband? I don't need this. You don't. Let Uncle Al's army come through for you. Yes, ma'am. No problem. Coffee? 
Uncle L's highly trained army attacks general and major repairs on your private vehicle in a personal way. Tanks. No, tank you. Uncle L, crushing the competition and high cost suit with the respect you deserve. Yeah! L. Dietrich, Oldsmobile, GMC truck in Waterford. If you're a sports fan, whether you live in Michigan or anywhere in the United States, you should subscribe to this magazine, Sports Fans Journal, and here's how. Our columns include Ernie Harwell, George Kell, Don Cherry, George Allen, Denny McLean, Jim Northrup, Bob Feller, Dick Vitale, also more stars and features and profiles. For more information, call 24 hours a day, 751-1818. Sports Fans Journal is available at newsstands and bookstores and Tiger Stadium souvenir stands. Call 751-1818. If you know suburban Detroit, you know that Dugan's Irish Pub is an institution. But what you may not know is what we have new here at Dugan's. We simply call it up on the roof. You've seen it downtown, but this is the only roof deck in Oakland County. A great place to bring dates, friends, or meet after work. We've got the same Dugan drink specials and, of course, the Big Chief Burger. Often imitated, never duplicated. So stop by Dugan soon. See our beautiful roof deck and have a bite of nostalgia. Hey, where's the meat? It's right here at Cattleman's Meat Center where you can buy fresh, lean, top quality beef, pork, veal, poultry, even fish. Packing house style, save up to 40%, quality guaranteed. Where's the meat? Come inside our 3,500 square foot cooler for everyday low prices like Grand opening special, boneless strip steaks, $1.99 a pound. Cattleman's Meat Center, Eastern Market Area, and Hamtramck. No limit, save up to 40%. You said it, honey. We're back on Sports View with Mike O'Hara of the Detroit News, Kurt Sylvester, the free press of the beat writers for the Lions. Been doing it for many, many years now. And it's got to be a struggle covering this team. I mean, you guys have both been there. Uh, you did have the one good that. year. How many years have you guys been covering the Lions, Kurt? Uh, Mike's the dean. This is his 12th season. I'm the vice dean. It's my 11th season. Of course, you left the Pistons who were on a downer. And oh, when yeah. you left, they just started Boy, going up. I really attract them, don't you I? Do. You do. You really get the beauties. Yeah. It's, uh, it, it does get to be kind of a struggle because you get tired of... I mean, there's only about two or three ways to cover a losing team. You know, you can, First, you take it seriously, and then you rip them, and then you make fun of them. And then there's there's nothing else to do, you know. You just gotta resort to telling the you know another sad story. Yeah, but you know it's, it's still it's it's our job. And, you know, oh it's sure. Not, it's, I, mean, I don't buy a dozen roses and celebrate when they win, and I don't wail and gnash my yeah. teeth when they lose either. So I'm not involved in their in their <laughs> winning and losing. I mean, my goals aren't their goals, you know. But it's got to be more fun when they win. It just a, seems to be a better atmosphere. I, Why would you I ask us that? <laughs> How do we know? <laughs> I think it's easier. If anything, it, it makes it easier because. Uh, Guys are ha easier to get along with, and they've got more to say, and more good things happening. When they lose, everybody you know grumbles, and nothing you, good. You to guys say. mentioned you know this this team's a better team, and I agree, it is a better team. But they find a way to lose. There's one play every game. I mean, that snap yesterday was an absolute <laughs> fiasco for That's, God's sakes. Kind of took the momentum away from him. <laughs> say the it, least. Yeah. I mean, he threw that Abdul Jabbar couldn't have, <laughs> if he got as high as Dave Jumman couldn't have gotten that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, you said bad. it. <laughs> Who well, do you blame well, for that? I mean, he said he didn't even know the guy. He thought the guy was right behind him. I mean, my God, he's a center. I know this. I'm pretty sensitive in that area. I would have felt some hands there if that had been me. <laughs> you could, so. should be able to tell if the quarterback's right, you know, right up behind him. He went home, so you yeah. blame the center, Steve Martha. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, he took the responsibility for it. I think um, Rusty Hilger was his first time playing with the Lions. <laughs> the quarterback is supposed to make the shotgun call. And apparently he forgot. But the center still, uh, on third down and long, uh, whatever the yardage was, uh, he he should have realized. Yeah. I think it he should have realized that you know that they were in the nickel package and that they were going to throw the ball. And when you hear the signals, you can realize that they're not coming from right in your ear. They're coming. From <laughs> yeah, they're a little ways away. Better you're hard of hearing. hearing. You know, yeah. <laughs> they're coming from right in your rear. Yeah. <laughs> Do you guys feel that the Lions have drafted smartly? When I say smartly, it seems like they've drafted some airheads over the over the last 10, 15 years. And I don't think they've drafted, uh, in a lot of cases, quality people. And that's one of their downfalls, in my opinion. Would you like to reply to that? Sure. I mean, who do you mean in particular, Ron? David Some Lewis. people are no. David Lewis didn't seem to be like he was a Harvard grad. He, well, or any of these. He was, of these he, was he was smart enough. He just uh, he Not wasn't inclined to, to work at it, <laughs> and uh, at all really. I mean, the guy had some physical ability, but he just uh, they never got it out of him for whatever. Well, if you reason. want to mention names, I'll even toss another one. They say Mark Nichols was not a brain surgeon either. 
<laughs> well, I don't, you know, I mean, I don't have any idea how these guys test yeah. out in terms of intelligence. Maybe you do. Maybe you have their test. No, I don't. But I mean, when the, when the guy can't run a route, it tells me that the, the guy's not all there. And Mark Nichols, I understood, just didn't know his routes. He'd forget him. Well, I, to me, Mark's biggest problem uh, was his hands. Uh, he had a lot of balls hit him in the hands, and, yes, and they, did. didn't, they didn't stick. you got to catch those guys, though. Yeah, you really should, hands. yeah, if you want to stay in it. Another thing, remember this about Mark Nichols. If he had been a, a third or fourth round draft choice, sure. everybody would have said he's a fine football player, but he, he was a first he round draft choice. He came with the curse, too, of Monty Clark saying and Mark Nichols is going to do what our passing game with Billy Sims has done for our running yeah, game. And now, what a dumb thing to say about a well, poor guy, you know? Yeah, and he was not a Billy person. Sims type of ball player. If he'd have been a third or fourth round draft choice, he would have had a nice career. He'd have been out of here. And nobody would have You guys see potential in this, in this particular <coughs> ball club right now with the talent, with what they have right now. They can win. Oh, yeah, well, not with entirely with this talent, but I think that uh, with, with the addition of one or two players, I don't mean that I don't see any more rebuilding for this team, but one or two players, primarily a running back. This team, like I said, the next coach is going to look like a genius. There's another. I mean, this Gary James doesn't exactly feel like. Uh, well, he's, he's the smartest guy in the face of the earth, either. Well, I don't know. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know much know of this is smart. brain power. I mean, yeah. you know, the, I mean, the guy doesn't pick up his assignments. They say he's not. Well, uh, I I don't think it's a matter. I really don't think it's a matter of, of not being smart enough to learn the system or anything. I think it's just a matter of he is not an instinctive back. He's not a natural cutback runner. He's strong enough. He's fast enough, but he just doesn't have the instincts. Uh, physically, he's probably every you know every bit as good as Billy Sims was. But he just doesn't have the instincts. Doesn't have any feel for the game. Right. If he just was, if, he was if, he, if, if Gary James would have had a feel for the game, he'd have played running back at LSU. But he played wing back. He's a wing back. And the Lions drafted him as a running back. I thought that was a big mistake. James Jones in the last couple of years has gone downhill. What do you, uh, what do you say to that? What, what, what was the problem there? Just he wants to get the heck out of this town. It doesn't I, appear to me like that. When he turns it on, I mean, there were a couple of plays again yesterday where he turned it on, and he can be effective. But uh, James. Uh, doesn't seem to be, in the last two years, he just has not come and played hard on every down. At least that's what some of the coaches feel. You think uh, it's the team whether, or is it him? I think it's, a, it's him. Well, it's a combination of things, too. I mean, you know, he only carried the ball twice against, uh, against the Bears on Sunday, and he can't get any feel for the game. And, th and there's another thing. They've taken a lot of his plays away because he's the only guy they trust to block. And, and also, I, he was so productive his first couple of years, and I, I think he just, to a certain extent, got very discouraged because nothing good was happening. He, he, as hard as he was playing, they weren't going anywhere. You know, if you notice, there was one time there on the sidelines, he got into a big argument with the coaches because they sent in the wrong play in short yardage. And uh, they didn't see a, one of the Bears defenders go in, in in their short yardage defense. Well, you ought to be able to see a guy, you know, six six wearing a white uniform run on the so. field. <laughs> I, mean, I don't think that takes, we're talking about brain power, that doesn't take a genius either. No. We'll be back. More from Kurt Sylvester of the Detroit Free Press, and Mike O'Hare of the Detroit News Beat Writers. The Detroit Lions after this timeout. Welcome to the finest sports medicine center in southeastern Michigan. High school athletes, top Detroit pro athletes, are weekend warriors. We treat them all with the most sophisticated equipment for athletic injuries. Computer testing of injuries with Cybex and the new Lido machine, and of course a wide array of Nautilus equipment. All supervised by sports medicine physicians, physical therapists, and athletic trainers. We've got three convenient locations in Metro Detroit. Detroit and Riverside Osteopathic Hospitals and the new Horizon Health and Surgery Center. So what are you waiting for? Call today and start feeling better. Hi everybody. Hi, Hi Nick. What brings you into Maxie's? I'm having dinner with the Dovers. There's Ben Dover, his wife Eileen Dover, and the kids. There are more interesting people for you to meet here at Maxie's. Besides that, we have great food, superb entertainment, wonderful atmosphere. Why don't you come out and you'll discover why hundreds of people are saying, meet me at Maxie's. It's the place to be in the northern suburbs. And there's a flipped over, skipped over, the ran from across the lake, float over, and from the rodeo, Buckdover is going to be here. 
Binary Computers is celebrating their ninth anniversary and how they've become one of Detroit's top independent computer dealers is really simple. A great selection of brand name computer products, outstanding service, and highly knowledgeable trained consultants who make things understandable in plain English. Binary now has facsimile machines and telephone systems, so stop in for special anniversary savings at Binary Computers, Metro Detroit's business computer center, Woodward at 12 Mile, Berkeley. Remember, if you haven't got a computer, you'd better get one before your competitor does. It's time to eat and I'm so hungry now My stomach's turning upside down Day or night when I want a bite I want the best little burger in town French fries, onion chips, creamy chocolate shakes Baby, they're so hard to refuse For dinner or lunch, there's a lot too much And for breakfast you just can't lose We're back on Sports View with Mike O'Hara of the Detroit News and Kurt Sylvester of the Free Press who are covering the Detroit Lions. And uh, I'm going to go in the quarterback situation. I guess about five more uh, went down yesterday. So many this year. Every new rule they put in, it seems like to protect the quarterback. Now what do you do? Uh, there's uh, sure been a rash of them. I don't think it's, uh, <laughs> I think it's just a coincidence, really. I don't think there's any, uh, I don't think it means the defensive ends are playing any better. It, it may be that NFL defenses are getting a little smarter and they're, they're rushing the linebackers. Maybe they're figuring out more effective ways to get to the quarterback. But that's to give the them skirts, it seems think. like. Just <laughs> put a skirt on them today. Well, yeah, but guys who weigh 210 pounds are getting hit by guys who weigh 280 pounds yeah. in all directions. So, you know, and I've, not just getting hit. I mean, they're getting hit at getting you know, hit. 30 miles an hour. Do you, do, you, do you limit how many people can rush? Or do no. You, no, no, you can't do that. You no. can't protect guys anymore. I think the, the rules to protect quarterbacks are just fine now. If you but if, if it's more than two steps before you get to the quarterback, you're charged with a late hit after he's released the football. So, you know, I've heard, you know, one quarterback told me that one of the reasons is because quarterbacks don't take steroids and are not as big as guys who, you know, guys who are rushing them. Now, you know, that's just shooting in the yeah. dark and all that, but that's what I've heard. Yeah. Dale Rogers making the comment about Ben Johnson didn't, didn't go off too well, I don't think, with the people when he came out and said that... Uh, what about the steroid situation? He said, well, you can flush that out of the system. That, I yeah. uh, don't think, really was a thing to say there. Well, I, get me going on steroids. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you get his blood pressure up, that face will get red again, and he'll start spitting and sputtering. But, uh, <laughs> I, see, I'm not as anti-steroids as most of you. Know, I'm, I'm not unalterably opposed wrong. to steroid use. They're mind-altering. Just They're not put, mind put the altering. bodies out there as they come. You know, if you've got, if you got a six foot two, one hundred and eighty pound body, then that's what you got to work with. And don't lift weights. No, that's don't work on, don't run, fine. don't Eating do protein anything. foods. That's fine, but but uh, uh, red meat and vegetables don't change your mood. They're not mood altering. Playing football uh, alters your mood. Do you ever think of that? But it's not an artificially induced. Do mood. you realize that steroids are legal? They're not illegal. Sure, you know that? that's right. That's right. They're legal. It's only the, when they're used illegally. Let's you know. Let's be in. Let's be in penicillin. Let's be in Motrin. Let's well, be in oatmeal. Penicillin oat meal, doesn't change anybody's milk. attitude. It saves some lives, but it, it doesn't make them well, more vicious not on the milk. Foot, That's great. football field. <laughs> Pure milk is, is, is the best thing you can have. Good for uh, half percent. Things, yeah. yeah, that's right. Did we get a signal to go out? No, no. I think we can continue. No, I remember you. Said, I don't remember what signal. I thought we gave a thirty-second signal, but milk. No, you, didn't. you, you didn't go to the indicator way. first. Or yeah, we should be in milk because using milk leads to steroids. Anybody who's ever used steroids. Started out on milk, so let's be in milk. <laughs> Talking about this division right now, 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 now the Bears doesn't look like, uh, despite all the changes they've made and all the top players that they lost, are not rebuilding like a lot of people thought. They seem to be reloading. Well, yeah, I think they're rebuilding and reloading at the same time. I mean, they got rid of guys who were one guy, Willie Gall, that was a bit of a problem to them. We got some draft mm -hmm. choices. And you watch, in the next two or three years, they're going to really load up. They're, they're not as deep now. They're not the same team they were in 1984 when they you know, won the uh, Super Bowl championship that season. But they're still a good team as long as they don't have to sink too low. They don't have the same depth that they did. But uh, those frontline guys, they'll play with anybody. Minnesota got a chance to win this division this year. Well, they've, they beat the Bears once, so I yeah. guess you've got, got a chance. Once. Yeah. I don't think that, you know, at first I thought they did. I don't think they've got the heart for it. Quarterback situation you wonder about over there in Minnesota too, don't you? Well, yeah, you know, it just goes to show you how important and how valuable Jim McMahon is. He started six straight games. They're five and one with all the players they've lost. He might be the most valuable player in football. Interesting. We'll close it out with Mike O'Hara and Kurt Sylvester, the beat writers uh, of the Detroit Lions beat after this timeout.
Tigers continue their drive toward the Eastern Crown this summer on Pass. Pull up a chair for 80 live Tiger telecasts with Larry Osterman calling the action, along with former Tiger great Jim Northrup as they track Sparky Sluggers through their demanding big league schedule. That's more games than you'll find telecast on any other channel. So bring the action of the majors to your house today, because when the Tigers step to the plate, they're at home on Pass. That was me, John Rouser, not too many years ago, as a defensive back with the Pittsburgh Steelers, after my playing career at the University of Michigan had ended. Now I'm proud to be co-owner of the Sting, Detroit's most dynamic nightclub. We've got continuous live DJs, continuous videos, and live entertainment every weekend. But you don't have to disco. The Sting is also a great after work place to meet other professional people who frequent our lounge. So stop in and see us at the Sting. We're in the old Playboy Club, the largest greenfield, with plenty of lighted, secured parking. Thermal Window, the Midwest exclusive manufacturer of the Polytex 4 vinyl replacement window, is celebrating their anniversary with an unbelievable five day offer. This week only, buy five windows for $995. Our thermo insulated tilt in windows are specially designed to make cleaning a snap, and they have a lifetime warranty. At Thermo Window, we manufacture, install, service, and guarantee what we sell. Five windows, only $995. Call today for a free in home estimate. Here comes air conditioning satisfaction. Carrier. Research proves carrier owners are more satisfied than owners of any other air conditioning brand. Carrier satisfaction. Year after year after year. Buy satisfaction now and get a $200 rebate. Call for details. This is Dennis Krieger inviting you to call me at Town Center Heating and Cooling in Dearborn. We're located just one mile from I-94 on the Southfield Freeways. We aren't comfortable until you are. Closing it out with Mike O'Hare and Kurt Sylvester, beat writers covering the Detroit Lions. Guys, the Super Bowl. Who's going to win the Super Bowl? Um, I'll tell you what. I picked Cleveland early in the season. <laughs> and uh, if Bernie Kosar comes back, I still think that they can, uh, if, if they can last just until Bernie gets back. Through they another might be out of it by then. They're three well, games the out danger. of first place now. They might if be they out can of make the playoffs. the playoffs and Bernie Kosar comes back, I still think they can, uh, they can win it. Well, you know, I, I took the Browns to get there and the 49ers to win it, then I'll, okay. I'll, I think I'm going to be half right. I Which really do. I, well, the I half the 49ers 49ers. I, I think, think the 49ers, 49ers are going to win it. Pretty good team. Hey, you guys got your own television show now. You can watch it on the, well, on Pass. That's right. Give we're, the times. We're multimedia now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 7 o'clock Wednesday nights on Pass. It's called Front Page Football. Uh, Mike and I just thought it'd be kind of fun to do, and it, it, it is kind of fun You can also watch on United do. Cable. On That's United right. Cable, United Cable, exactly. Oakland County. That's right. Channel 63. Okay, we want to thank you guys for coming on. Thanks a lot. and fun. We and have a dramatic reading here. Another dramatic <laughs> reading. Al Dietrich Oldsmobile, the advertiser on M59 in Waterford. Great deal on a new car or truck. And sports fans, journals going strong. We'd like you to dial this number 24 hours a day to subscribe to this four-color, hottest sports magazine going 751-1818. We have Dugan's Irish Pub in downtown Royal Well, Woodward North of 13 Island Royal Oak, Cattleman's Meat Center in the Eastern Market, and Hamtramck. Sports Medicine Center with old-timer Jack Moore is running the situation with three locations if you've been injured. Maxie's Main Street in the heart of downtown Royal Oak. Binary computers for all your computer needs on Woodward <laughs> at 12 Mile Top and Hamburgers where Bob Page doesn't go because he's in New York now. Pro-Am Sports System, The Sting, James Cousins at The Lodge, Thermal Window, and Town Center Heating and cooling. We'll talk to you next time. Another edition of Sports View. Bye bye, everybody.